for another uh, Math 141 Statistics video lecture for Morton College. I am once again uh, Dr. Scott Spaniel, your uh, instructor for this course. Uh, and today we're going to talk about section 6.2. So in 6.1, we talked about the idea of discrete uh, random variables and their probability distributions in general. And so in the next two sections, we're going to look at two specific examples of discrete probability distributions. The first one is the binomial probability distribution. Uh, and so what you want to do is turn to page 10 in our chapter 6 note sheets if you want to follow along in there. And we'll get started. So an experiment uh, is said to be a binomial probability experiment if the following things are true. The experiment is performed a fixed number of times. Each repetition of the experiment is called a trial. So if you do something over and over and over again, but you know how many times you did it. The trials are independent. This means that the outcome of one trial will not affect the outcome of another trial. So um, for each trial, there are two mutually uh, exclusive disjoint outcomes, success or failure. So either the thing happens or it doesn't. The probability of success is the same for each trial of the experiment. So one really easy example of a binomial probability experiment would be flipping a coin 10 times. Uh, how many times do you get a heads? So in that case, each flip of the coin is a trial. Each flip of a coin is independent of all the other ones, so that meets the second requirement. There is success or failure, heads or not, heads or tails, and the probability of success is the same for each trial, 50%. Okay, so that would be one example of a binomial probability experiment. So we could try and figure out what's the probability of getting four or fewer heads if you flip a coin 10 times. That would be an example of a binomial probability problem that we could do. So let the random variable x be the number of successes in n trials of a binomial experiment. Then x is called a binomial random variable. Notation that we use for binomial probability distributions, we use lowercase n for the independent trials of the experiment. We use lowercase p to denote the probability of success of each trial so that 1 minus p is the probability of failure. So there's only two options, success or failure. So if the probability of success is p, then the complement of that 1 minus p is the probability of failure. And then we let x denote the number of successes in independent trials of the experiment. So if I don't remember what goes on that blank. <laughs> oh, okay, so that 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to n. Okay, so the number of successes has to be between 0 and the total number of trials. So I can't ask, for example, what's the probability of getting 12 heads in 10 flips of a coin? Right, that doesn't make any sense. So then the formula uh, for doing this is basically what we do is we take the number of ways we can get x successes in n trials right that's the number of ways you would count that up how many way how many different ways could you get four heads out of 10 flips could you go heads 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 and then six tails or one heads and then uh, six tails and then three heads all of those how many ways can that happen and that would be n choose six n co uh, combination six and then we multiply that by the probability of getting four heads right which would be the probability of success to the x power, and then we multiply that by the probability of getting six failures. So that would be n minus x, and the number of ways to do that. So like for example, if I wanted to know the probability of four heads in 10 flips, right? We'd wanna figure out the number of ways to get 10, uh, four heads and 10 flips. So the number of different ways that could happen, so that would be 10C4, 
right? Because the the order they happen in doesn't matter uh, necessarily. So that would be 10 C4. And I need a calculator. So that's, there's 210 ways to do that. And then we want to get the probability of getting four heads. So that's 0.5, the probability of getting a heads to the fourth power. Which is 0 0.0625. And then we want the probability of getting six not heads, right? So we want, like in the formula... Let me write it out like it is in the formula. We do the probability 1 minus the probability of failure, which is 0.5, uh, probability of success, which is 0.5, so 1 minus 0.5, to the 10 minus 4 power. So that would be 0.5 to the 6th in this case, which is 0 0.015625. And then we just multiply those all together. So 210 times 0 0.0625 times 0 0.015625, which is 0 0.2051 probability. So if you were to flip a coin 10 times, the probability of getting exactly four heads would be about 21% of the time. Okay, so that's the idea of what we're doing here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to use technology to do this a little quicker and easier, and that's where class calc is going to come in and a couple of other things. So um, a couple of values, the mean or expected value for this. So let, um, if I were to do the heads example again, and we flipped a coin 10 times, how many heads would you expect to get? Well, you'd expect to get five, right? Half of them to be heads. And that's simply the number of trials times the probability of success. And that's the mean. So that's the number of expected successes. And then the standard deviation is the square root of n times p times 1 minus p. Okay. And then one other note before we get into using technology to deal with these types of problems. For fixed p, as the number of trials n in a binomial experiment increases, the probability distribution of the random variable x becomes bell-shaped. As a rule of thumb, if n times p times 1 minus p is greater than or equal to 10, the probability distribution will approximate, uh, be approximately bell-shaped. Okay, and we looked at bell-shaped previously. Okay. So, it says here, a binomial probability experiment is conducted with the given parameters. Graph the following probability distribution and calculate the mean and standard deviation, then compute the probability of X successes in the independent trials of the experiment. Okay, so this is going to allow us to play around with what class cal can do for us here, which is actually quite a bit. Okay, so let's see if I can do that. No, because I'm sorry, I'm on a Mac. So I have a PC where that would have worked. But anyway, so what we want to do is we want to do a binomial probability distribution. So if we go to stat and we go to distributions and plots, you'll notice that one of them says binomial distribution. So that's the one we want. And then it asks us for two things, n and p. And if you don't remember what those are, you can click this little question mark and it tells you n is the number of trials and p is the probability of success. So in this case, we have 40 trials and the probability of success is 0.99. And then if I tell it to zoom in, it'll zoom to make this thing kind of fit, although it doesn't really fit here. So let's zoom out a little bit more. Oh, and now it did something weird. Okay, but we can see down here to the left, the probability of anything less than uh, like 33 gets really, really small. So you can't even see it. Um, so this thing at the moment isn't even near bell-shaped, right? So that's what the graph of this looks like. Now, if I, let's, what they tell us here is that, looking at one of the things it said here is it said that if you increase the number of trials, it should get closer and closer to bell shape. So let's see if we increase the number of trials to 400 what the shape is. See how it's getting less skewed? Now let's make it 4,000. And now it's a bell. So that's just using this example to point out um, one of the definitions we just had. If the number of trials is big enough, 
this distribution will become bell-shaped. Okay. So now let's go back to the original problem, 40, and zoom back in. So it looks like this. And then the question we wanted to answer was, what's the probability of getting 38 successes, right? And you can do that in one of two ways. One way is just look at the graph. How tall is the bar at 38? And the answer there is 0 0.053. So that's the probability of getting um, 38 successes, 0 0.053. You can also use these two buttons that are right here. The one on the left means cumulative density function. So what's the cumulative if you want to add some bars together? The one on the right is the point density function, P. So we want the point density function because we're only looking for one value. So choose PDF and then just put in the number you want. And then it will find and it'll tell me that it's uh, 0 0.0532, right? If I wanted to go to more decimal places. So that'll give me more decimal places. So that's the idea. So what I'd like you to do now is pause the video and see if you can do this second problem using class calc. So put it into your calculator and see what you, see what the graph, oh, and I, sorry, I forgot to do one thing, which was mean and standard deviation on the previous one. So let's do that real quick and then I'll have you try it. So mean is just, so mu sub x is just 40 times 0.99, right? So in this case, the mean is 39.6. So if you had a probability of success of almost 99% and you did 40 trials, you'd expect to have almost all of them be successful. And then the standard deviation is the square root of 40 times 0.99 times 1 minus 0.99. Okay, so we just put that in the calculator. And you get 0 0.6293, okay, for a standard deviation. Okay, so that's the idea. So now go and try and do those same things using class calc and uh, answer this second one. So pause the video, and when you turn it back on, we'll go through it. Okay, so now that you've had a chance to try this one, let's look at it together. So go ahead and change the distribution here. You can get a new one if you want, or you can just change this one to fit what you want, which is 10 for the number of trials and the probability of success is 0.4 and then hit this little uh, magnifying glass to zoom in on it and there's our new one right so that's what the graph looks like and then in this case um, what our PDF is we want X to be 3 so we can put in 3 which is 0.214 or it's the height of this bar right Two. so uh, you either get 0 0.215 if you round to three decimal places, or if you want to round to more decimal places, 0 0.2150, right? If you round to four, this would be round to that. So that's the idea there. And then you can do the mean and the standard deviation. The mean is 10 times 0.4, which is four. Um, and the standard deviation is the square root of 10 times 0.4 times 1 minus 0.4, which is 1.5492, okay? So that's the idea. So, now what we'd like to do is uh, be able to use this CDF function Okay, so let's look at some more examples of using this by flipping over to the next page. So these are still just abstract questions. Um, this first one we kind of just already did, right? If I want to find the probability of exactly 17 successes, I just put in my N and my P in here. So N is 20 and P is 0.6. And then I can zoom in on it, although I don't really need to do that step. But so there's the graph. And so if I want exactly 17, I can just click on the bar, right? So it's 0 0.12, or I can type into PDF 17. And so that's uh, 0 0.0123. And one of the things I haven't mentioned yet, but if you were to add all of these bars together, the height of each of these bars together, you would get one, right? Because this is a probability distribution. 
So each one of these represents a probability. So the highest probability in this case would be a 12 out of 20, which is 18% uh, chance of happening. So 12 successes is the most likely thing to occur. Okay, so that's the idea there. So then the next one uh, says, what's the probability uh, when N is 20? Once again, but uh, 20 trials, probability of success of 7, and X is greater than or equal to 12. Okay, so let's try that one. So 20, change this to a 0.7. And I can zoom to just get a better picture. And so we want greater than or equal to 12. So here's 12, right? And so we want that one, and this one, and this one, right? All the ones greater than or equal to 12. We want to add all those together. So one way to do it would be to click each one of these bars and then simply add those numbers together. And that would give you the probability. But this CDF button allows us to do cumulative functions. So notice here you've got blank is less than or equal to X, which is less than or equal to blank. Okay. And so what we want to do is we want to fill this in so that it gives us the one we want. Well, X is greater than or equal to 12 is the same thing as 12 is less than or equal to X. So that means I can use this function to put in a 12 is less than or equal to x. And notice it highlighted all the bars that we just talked about, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And so the chances of 12 or more successes is 0 0.8867. Okay? So that's the idea there for that number. Okay? So what I'd like you all to do now is pause the video once again and try doing these two. One more PDF and one more CDF. When you start the video up again, we'll go through them together, and then we'll be done with this, and we'll get into some actual applications of this. Okay, so the first one said we want to do 50 ends with a probability of 0 0.02. And then I'm going to get rid of my CDF and my PDF to start over. So then we can zoom in on the graph, so that's what the graph looks like. And then I want to know what's the probability of 3. So if I click on the bar 3, it's 0 0.061. Or once again, we could use the PDF function and put in the number 3. And it would tell us 0 0.061. Okay, or 0 .060, uh, 0 0.0607, if we're rounding to more decimal places. Okay, and then... Uh, for the last one, it has an N of 12 and a probability of success of 0.35. Oops, I put in too many decimals. And so that's what that graph looks like if we zoom in. And so what's the probability of X is less than or equal to 4? So that's going to be CDF. But we want the 4, 3, 2, 1, and 0. So I'm going to put in x is less than or equal to 4. And it is greater than or equal to 0 because 0 is the smallest number of successes, so we don't need to change that. And we get 0 0.5833. So if you add 12 trials with a probability of success of 0 0.35, there's a 58% chance that your result number of successes would be less than or equal to 4. This is what that means. Okay. So that's what that looks like. So now let's look at some cases where you might actually be able to use this probability. So if we flip to the next page, we're going to keep using the calculator, but let's put it uh, into some context. So according to flightstats.com, American Airlines flight 1247 from Orlando to Los Angeles is on time 65% of the time. Suppose 15 flights are randomly selected and the number of on-time flights is recorded. Okay, Why is this a binomial probability experiment? Well, let's go back to the reasons. One, did we do this a fixed number of times? Yes n equals 15, okay? So we did number one. Number two, are the trials independent? Does the fact that the flight was on time the day before affect whether or not it's on time today? Most likely not, so they are independent. Okay, next thing. For each trial, there are two mutually exclusive disjoint outcomes, success and failure. So what would success be? Well, success would be on time. So on time is success, and its probability is 0 0.65, right? Because they're on time 65% of the time. 
And then last but not least, the probability of success is the same for each trial experiment. Yes, the probability that it would be on time is 65%. Okay. So find the probability that exactly 10 flights are on time. So this is where we're going to want to go into here. We're going to want to do the binomial distribution. And for all of these, we're going to put in the same n and p, right? We're going to have an n of 15 and a p of 0 0.65, which I just realized is not up on the screen that's being recorded. So this is what you're going to want to put in the calculator. And once again, similar to what we've done before, you can go find it, or I could just type it in. And it'll find it like that. So you can either go into the menu. It's under stat, distribution and plot, binomial distribution, or just type it in. And then we've got an N of 15 and a P of 0.65. And most of these are going to be the same. But if I zoom in on it, it looks like this, right? And for this problem, we're going to use this almost all of these. So what's the probability that exactly 10 flights are on time? Well, that's going to be PDF. Of, uh, and then we're going to put in 10 in the blank. So PDF of 10, or you can just find 10 and click on it. Okay, so the probability of exactly 10 is 0 0.2123. What's the probability that at least 10 flights are on time? Is the second question. Well, for at least 10 flights to be on time, we want X to be, that's 10 or more. So we want Remember, we're trying to fill in these blanks, either the left. So we want 10 to be less than or equal to x, because we want 10 or more. So we want 10 to be less the smallest number. So we can put into CDF, we can put in 10 is less than. So notice, see how that highlighted 10 or more, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So that gives us, uh, that was into CDF. Okay, so that gave us a problem of 0 0.5. 642. Okay. What's the probability that fewer than 10 flights? So in this case, we're going to do CDF again, but if we want, and we're going to use this same, so we're going to have to fill in this blank. If we want there to be fewer than 10, that means we want 10 to be fewer than 10. So we might think, okay, well, instead of putting 10 on this side, let's put 10 on the other side. But you might notice something here. Is 10 included? Yes, right? It's still colored in. Is 10 fewer than 10 flights? No. So we actually have to back this down to just 9, right? And so now we get less than 9. So, and that's a probability of 0 0.4357. And that's an interesting thing about these uh, discrete probability distributions. There, um, less than 10 is the same thing as less than or equal to 9 because there's no numbers in between 9 and 10 in a discrete probability distribution. That is not the same in a continuous probability distribution. And then the next one says between 7 and 10 inclusive. So that would be 7 is less than or equal to x, which is less, uh, sorry, 7 is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 10. So that one's pretty straightforward, right? We just put in 7 on the left and 10 on the right. And so that just gives me the bar 7, 8, 9, and 10, which is a 0 0.65 Nine, sorry, 0 0.605, 0 0.6059, okay, is what that one looks like. Okay, and then the next one says compute the mean and standard deviation of the random variable x. So that means we're going to do the mean, right, is just um, mu sub x is n times p. So that's 15 times point, um, 0.65. So that's 15 times point 0.65 is 9.75 and then sigma is the square root of n times p times 1 minus p so that's the square root of 15 times 0 0.65 times 1 minus 0 0.65 
So that's 1.847. And then it says on a uh, of the 100 randomly selected flights, find the interval that would be considered usual for the number of on-time flights. So what they've done here is they've increased the sample size, the number of trials. So let's go ahead and look at what that looks like. So change our graph. Instead of only 15 trials, let's do 100 trials. Okay. And one thing you should notice about this is the graph is bell-shaped. Right? And if you remember back to chapter 3, one of the things we know about bell-shaped graphs is they follow the empirical rule. And the empirical rule says that 95% of data, which is usual, right? Because unusual is 5%. 95% of data is between mu sub x plus or minus sigma sub x. Okay. So we could use this idea in the previous uh, problem to do it. Not exactly the same numbers, right? Because we changed n. But mu sub x now is going to be 100 times 0.65, which is 65. And sigma sub x is going to be the square root of 100 times 0.65 times 1 minus 0.65, which is 4 point, um, let's just do 4.8 to make things easy. So then to find the region that's usual, we take 65 plus, uh, sorry, plus or minus 2 sigma, plus 2 uh, times 4.8, and 65 minus 2 times 4.8, which is 74.6 and 55.4. So we would expect to be between those. And if you want to check this answer, what you can do is you can use CDF, and you can do between those two numbers, except remember you have to use whole numbers here. So between 55 and 75 and what do you get you get 97.2 so it, it falls within that range and if i let's see what happens if i try to put into decimal just out of curiosity if we put in the decimals it might actually do this for us so let's put in the decimals so um i did 57 and now let's do 74.6 and if i put in those decimals look i get basically almost exactly 95 so we did some rounding off so that's what we expect Okay, so that's it. In fact, okay, so that's it for that page. So what I'd like y'all to do is flip to this last page of this section. Uh, pause the video. Sorry, I don't know. Um, whoa, what? Oh, shoot, I accidentally undid or deleted something. I didn't mean to. Oh, no, there it is. Okay, so there's the work for that. So what I'd like you to do now is go to page 14 and try this problem uh, on your own using the idea we just looked at. And Okay, so now that you've all had a chance to try this problem, let's do it on our own. So in this case, N is 10, right? They talk to 10 adults, and P is 0.75. Uh, and I'll do all of these up here on the screen, and then I'll put the answers up just to make things go a little quicker. Okay. So uh, our binomial distribution from 10 uh, with 10 trials and 75% chance of success looks like this. Okay. So what's the probability that exactly 6? So PDF of 6. That's... 0 0.1460, uh, if I'm rounding to, right, it's um, 0 0.145998, so that rounds off to 0 0.1460, right, the 9 rounds us up to a 10, which makes that 5 into a 6. Then if we want to do the probability of fewer than 7, so that was PDF of 6, um, if we want to do fewer than seven, so that means um, x has to be less than or equal to six, right? So I would look like, sorry, this is what the first answer looks like, and this is what the second one should look like in CDF, right? And the reason we have to do six is because if we did seven like this, then seven gets included, 
but 7 is not fewer than 7. So we want to start with 6, which is 0 0.2241. And then the next one says 5 or more. So that means we want to do, get rid of that, and we want to do 5 is less than or equal to x. And there's no upper bound. So that would be 0 0.9803. 0 0.9803 so that looks like that and then if we want to do um, between 5 and 8 right inclusive then that would just be between 5 and 8 so that's 0 0.7362 and then the next question says 10 adult Americans are randomly selected and three reported um, being satisfied with the job nation's airlines are doing would it be unusual to find three or fewer satisfied so we could try that three or fewer would be x is less than or equal to three and then we can get rid of this five and so the probability of that is 0 0.0035 so would it be unusual yes because that's less than five percent right that's th uh, basically 0.4 percent and so what you might conclude is that opinions have changed it's gone down and then compute the mean and standard deviation of a random variable x, the number of satisfied adult Americans in 200 trials of the probability experiment. So if we were doing the same probability experiment, but we were doing 200 trials, that would just be um, mu sub x equals 200 times 0.75, which is 150, and then sigma sub x would be the square root of 200 times 0.75 times 0.25, which is 6.12. Okay. And so that's it for this section. So Um, so that's it for this section. Uh, that's one example of a uh, discrete probability distribution, the binomial probability distribution. And next time we're going to look at another example of a discrete probability distribution, uh, Poisson's uh, probability distribution. So we'll see you in the next lecture video.